Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about the respiratory system pathology and the lecture today is tuberculosis. So, we will talk about the pathogenesis, morphology, clinical progress of the tuberculosis. So, let us start with the epidemiology. Tuberculosis was a more prevalent disease in United States in 50s and since 50s there had been a steady decline till we reached 80s when AIDS surfaced. And due to that, the immunocompromised patients or patients with AIDS started contracting tuberculosis. So, that downward fall became stable or decline stopped till that the medical community figured out how to start managing the patients who are immunocompromised plus they have tuberculosis or how to prevent tuberculosis. So, now the decline has started again. Current state is that in United States, there are about 25,000 incidents of the tuberculosis yearly. Out of those, 40 percent are actually the immigrants who are coming in. So, it is really, really promising. However, worldwide, WHO's stats are that out of all the deaths, 6 percent of the deaths are because of tuberculosis. So, it is quite prevalent outside in the especially in the developing countries, especially in the areas that are impro impoverished, that are poor, where hygiene is not great, where moisture is more, where nourishment is not sufficient. These are the uh, unfortunate people who are more affected by tuberculosis. This is why also that tuberculosis or this pathogen is said to be the single most common pathogen that can cause death by itself. So, it does not have to be a super infection on something, it does not have to be combined with other pathogen, just TB pathogen itself is responsible for 6 uh, percent of the total deaths worldwide per year. So, now let us talk about the etiology. Now, for the etiology, what causes is of course, the pathogen is mycobacterium tuberculosis and the reservoir for humans is humans. The human one is mycobacterium tuberculosis hominis. It is also in the cows for example or animals. So, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis bovis is also a species that is actually uh, that can affect humans. And then there are mycobacterium avium as well which is usually less prevalent and less vulnerable or less virulent. However, for the patients who are immunocompromised, 10 to 30 percent of those patients get infected by the mycobacterium uh, avium. Now, what is the mode of trans transmission for this pathogen? The mode of transmission normally is the aerosol from an infected patient. So, patient is coughing or patient is talking or you are around that patient and as the aerosol is formed, the droplets from the patient's breath when you inhale them, these are the droplets that carry the pathogen from human to human through the aerosol. In the past, at least for the United States, in the past there was also a, a mechanism of transmission that was from for the mycobacterium bovis, which was drinking the unpasteurized raw milk from the cows. So, infected cows had the mycobacterium in their milk and when the humans will drink that, that would cause infection especially of the gastrointestinal tract. That infection in United States at least because of the pasteurized milk and because of the hygiene for the animals that has declined. However, still in the patients we can find gastrointestinal tuberculosis and that is nowadays when a patient who has pulmonary tuberculosis and that patient brings the phlegm up which has a tuberculous pathogen in it and then swallows the phlegm. That phlegm when it goes into his stomach and then goes to the large and small intestine, it gets stuck there in the, uh, in the glandular parts 
in the intestine and then it starts replicating and infecting there. So that is the etiology and now let us look at this pathogen before we go on to the pathogenesis. Okay guys, so look at this diagram over here. These are the rod shaped mycobacterium tuberculae which are hominis type. So these rods are the, are the mycobacterium tuberculae. One interesting thing about this pathogen is that this is this has a cell membrane which is or a membrane that is rich in lipids and secondly it has lots of small structures that have manos attached to them. Why is that important? We will see shortly in the pathogenesis that this manose is important because macrophages connect with this through the manose receptors. Check this out, this is also mycobacterium tuberculosis. These are, this is a close up view of the colonies that it forms. Normally what happens is that the lipid structures, the, the lipid in the walls they, or the membrane, that lipid just continues to stick with each other and if you take the close up out, if you zoom out a little bit, you would actually see that these rod like structures will make long threads which are called cords. So when you actually see it a little zoomed out, you would see long pink cords in acid fast stain, so like this. So of course we have zoomed in very much, so this may be just this little part here and due to that you see the clusters, but if you see this may be one cord going on. Here this is a acid fast stain, mycobacterium tuberculosis is usually um, stained better with the acid fast or zeal nielsen stain or carbon fusin stain and what happens is that this stain if you see here this is actually not one pathogen this is that cord formation. So this is many pathogens which are rod shaped and they are now fused with each other or connected with each other through their lipid walls and so these are the cords of red cords of mycobacterium tuberculosis present in the tissue. There is one more that you can see here there is one more that you can see here. Cool. So now let us start the pathogenesis. All right. So now continuing our discussion and let us start with the pathogenesis. Look, uh, tuberculosis has to be divided into two primary formats. One is called the primary tuberculosis and the other one is secondary tuberculosis. Both of those are further, they are possible to either resolve or become progressive. So let us look at that, let us start with the primary tuberculosis because the pathogenesis is different, the structure, the morphology is different and the clinical aspects are different. So you have to be able to separate them, imagine these as two separate diseases. So let us start with the primary tuberculosis. Primary tuberculosis starts with this, so let us say there is a Okay, so let us say here is a, here is an airway and this is the pleural surfaces, visceral pleura, the inner green layer and the parietal pleura, outer green layer. This is the airway and of course it would continue to divide till it reaches the respiratory zones and then these are, the rest is the lung parenchyma. Imagine that the pathogen comes in, so this is a pathogen. Pathogen comes into the lung and attaches to the epithelium. Most of the time the pathogen would reach and I am making it both in the, in all upper middle and lower lobe. So let us say the pathogen has reached in the alveoli. 
we have to figure out what happens the first exposure to the pathogen, what will that do? So this is the primary tuberculosis.